Filament dryers play an important aspect in your 3D printing experience. They're responsible for drying your filament. And what does that really do? Well, when you dry your filament, you can decrease the possibility of warpage. You can improve layer adhesion. You can reduce stringing and bubbling, which improves your surface quality. And these are all things that you want when you're 3D printing. You want the best experience possible. So that means you need to prepare your material as best you can for the prints that you're doing. A lot of prints take a lot of time, so it's an important step to consider. Now there are options, there are low-end options, there are high-end options. You can find a filament dryer pretty much anywhere. So that's why I want to talk to you today about the Ibos Polythemus and why it might be the better choice. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm Aaron and this is the Printosaurus. So there is a little assembly required. Everything arrives nicely packaged in the box that is shown here, but you do have to assemble the upper portion, the enclosure. The base comes fully assembled, so no need to do anything there. But for the enclosure, you will grab the nicely laid out instructions, which are fully colored and easy to read and easy to follow. And you will assemble the five panels, base and top pieces, and the four posts. Uh, the posts are slotted, they slot into the base, the top is distinguishable by two additional uh, brackets, uh, and that is so the handle holds in place. Really easy to assemble, I don't think you'll have any issues, all the screws are included, um, so you're good there. Uh, and then to run the 3kg spools, you can buy the expansion module. They're also nice enough on the website. They provide the STL that you can actually print the module. And that assembles in the same fashion as the top did. Four posts, a base and a top, and then those four panels slot into place. And you screw that into the existing enclosure. And now you can run 3kg spools. Pretty simple. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, pcbway.com. Jump online, check them out, take advantage of their Christmas sale they have going on right now where you can save up to 50%. They also have some free Christmas coupons, some free Christmas prototyping, and you can save up to 50% off of your 3D printing and CNC machining services. Quality parts, quality service, fast shipping, everything you need and more, pcbway.com. Our enclosure is assembled, moving on to the specs of the base. So in the center of the base here, we have a PTC heater uh, and a single fan that blows that air. Uh, they have a plate that sits over that heater and that routes the air up under where the rollers are uh, to the filament. And those rollers have a rubber coating on them. They are secured in place, which is nice compared to some that just kind of pop in place. These are actually screwed in place. In the front of the unit is the humidity and temperature sensor. And then on the back rollers uh, that are driven by that DC motor. To replace that motor, they have uh, a recommended uh, service interval of, of 1500 hours. Uh, that's when they recommend that it is replaced. They do include a single replacement motor. I didn't find anything on the website as to how much that motor might be, if you need an additional one or how you even uh, go about getting it. So I will follow up with that. But to replace that motor on the bottom of the base, one uh, Phillips head screw removes the panel and then under that is two additional Phillips head screws. And then you can unclip the motor and replace it. Uh, in the back of the unit, you have two decedent trays that just pop in and out of place. And for routing of PTFE tubes, you have three in the front, two in the back, and three on top of the unit. Uh, on the front is your display, your interface. You have six buttons that you can use. The Polythemus is pretty easy to operate. Upper left-hand corner on the main display is your power button. Once you've powered that on, you have up to 12 presets that you can work with. Nine of them are preset and three are customizable. And you can cycle through and select which filament type you want. And then once you've settled on what you want, you can hit that select button again, and that will set the target temperature. It will display your current humidity and the temperature, and then show you how long you have remaining in your drying cycle. 
on the right side of the screen to activate the 360 degree rotation, you can hit the middle button which is labeled 360 degrees. If you hit the power button one more time, it will put you in a mode that allows you to maintain humidity of your enclosure. So here, if you want to set a different target range, you use the gear button in the bottom left hand corner and then now you can cycle through and select which percentage you would like your target humidity to be. And once you hit that gear button again, it will maintain that setting by powering on and off to reach the target humidity or maintain it. One more touch to the power button, we'll turn the unit off. Polythemus offers a few key advantages over the two filament dryers that I have here. And that is it allows the ability to actually dry a 3 kg spool. And why is that important? Well, 3D printers are getting larger. Build volumes are increasing. You have the Orange Storm Giga, you have the SV08, um, you have the traditional Vorons, the 350, you have the Trident. You know, there's a number of printers now on the market that have uh, larger build volumes. And that typically means that eventually you're going to need larger spools to complete a project. And that is something the Solvo can't do. That is something that even the more expensive Sunlu S4 cannot do. And there is plenty of room for them to have designed that and they didn't. And that really is one key advantage that the Polythemus has over these filament dryers that are out right now. Another advantage that the Polythemus has over these standard filament dryers is the ability to dry your filament in a true 360 degree fashion. What I mean by that is the typical filament dryer does have rollers, but really those rollers are only there for when you're utilizing your filament dryer um, as a spool holder essentially to pull your filament through in a more optimal enclosure instead of being exposed to the elements. The Polythemus takes that a step further and actually has a DC motor that drives the rollers that rotates the filament while it is being dried. And what that does is it reduces the hot spots, it dries your filament more evenly, and that should increase the performance of your filament and also provide a little bit more longevity there by not exposing any one area to uh, too much heat for an extended period of time. So in my studio, the decibel level uh, kind of stays or hovers around 40, 42, 43 dBs. The IBOS filament dryer running uh, with the 360 uh, heating enabled, um, which is that additional DC motor running, uh, came in at 45 to 47 decibels. Uh, that's you know just barely above uh, what the room is with nothing on. And the S4 uh, that I used as a comparison, I, I kind of already knew this one was going to blow this out of the water, but uh, the S4 is loud. Um, I really like this filament dryer. I like that I can use four spools and dry them uh, for my AMSs is what I usually use it for. So I'll dry all four, throw them in the AMS, but it is loud. It is very loud. So if you have a common area where you know, you're all set up, uh, the S4 is probably not gonna be a good choice. And that is another key advantage to the Polythemus here is it is uh, relatively quiet for a filament dryer. It is also uh, not as loud as the Solval. The Solval um, is smaller than the S4 and it is louder. Uh, it's got some cheap fans in it and they like the buzz and make a lot of noise. So just as a sound comparison, uh, this guy definitely passes the sound test. Uh, if you need something just on that principle alone, uh, this Ivos Polythemus would definitely be something to look into. So now we're at the part where you guys were probably waiting for, and that is, does this thing actually work? So in order to test whether or not the filament dryer does what it's supposed to do, I use the weight method. So I took a spool of TPU that I've had sitting out for an extended period of time, uh, making sure it took on some moisture, and I have a scale. Uh, I did a baseline test print just to see how bad or how much moisture the TPU had, and the A1 Mini still did a decent job printing it, but I will show that to you anyway. So after I did that print, I put my spool on my scale and we ended up at 1182 grams. I then put it in the filament dryer, put it on the preset for TPU, which was 60 degrees Celsius for four hours. And I took it out and weighed it again. 
we had a one gram reduction of weight. It came in at 1181 grams. And I did another test print to see if there were any quality improvements because at the end of the day, a byproduct of drying your filaments and preparing your materials appropriately is you should have improved print quality. I didn't change any other specs. That's kind of irrelevant for this because we are testing this guy here, but it did improve uh, with drying the filament, which is something that you want. That's a good benefit. So that was a test that I used. Um, I tried this with uh, some PLA CF, some carbon fiber reinforced PLA. It also reduced about a gram and uh, that was more or less the average that I saw as I tested various filaments. Is this going to be a good filament dryer for you? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can look at this uh, to find that answer. The first one is, do you need a filament dryer that can do three kilogram spools? There's a lot of printers out there now with higher build volumes and there's really nothing on the market or not a lot on the market uh, in terms of the ability to dry those larger spools. So the Ibos Polythemus has an edge there and that's a good one because I have some large printers. I have an Orange Storm Giga that I'm gonna be testing soon and having the ability to dry that filament now uh, just makes me feel better about testing with that. So that could be an advantage for any one of you guys who have a, a larger printer. Keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of quality, the build quality is good. The enclosure, the panels, the acrylic, everything's cut nice, goes together relatively easy. All the screws were there. The handle is leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, it's a two-piece handle, um, but there is a number of files I found on printables um, where people are printing their handles. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to jump on there and grab one of those. Uh, the base is nice. Uh, power plug uh, secures nicely in the back. The buttons all work as they should. Uh, the screen looks great. Uh, no cracking, no issues, no peeling. Uh, so everything looks good there. The presets uh, appear to work. I use PLA and I use the TPU. I'm going to be testing ASA later as well. And all those presets are there, so I'll be able to utilize those for those tests. And if you want to customize something, you have three uh, presets that you can customize with. So features are good on this unit as well. Now, one thing that I'm not um, super high on, and unfortunately that's the price. So $129 gets you the enclosure with the expansion, uh, the full unit here. Um, I feel like that's a little bit high in comparison to some other filament dryers that work really good on the market. Um, so that is kind of a knock. And the other thing is, and I like this feature a lot, and that's the 360 degree rotation. Uh, I think the idea is fantastic to be able to dry your filament evenly and not have any one particular hot spot in your uh, filament, your spool. Uh, is very nice, but uh, that adds maintenance uh, because the motor, the DC motor that they have is only good for roughly 1500 hours. At least that's their recommended operating time and then you have to replace it. They give you one replacement, which is great, but if you jump on the website, you can't find an additional replacement. So that requires an email and checking in with their tech support and seeing if you can even get a motor. Uh, I am going to do that and I will put in my description how long that actually took to go through that process. But that's one more thing that you have to think about. Uh, so overall, the filament dryer worked as it's supposed to, a dryer filament. Uh, we were able to print with it without issue. Um, there was no cracking or it didn't over dry things and cause any uh, issues there. So that's good. Um, I like the humidity control on the unit, being able to just cycle this power button here and putting it in a humidity mode where I could maintain a certain humidity range while I print. Um, is, is really nice because that means your filament will stay optimal while you're printing large jobs, especially if you're going to use the big spools because you're going to be printing for days. I did a test the other day on the Orange Storm and 52 hours. That's 52 hours that my spool just sat out on the floor basically. Uh, now it can be in an enclosure. Uh, so I'm sold uh, just on, on that alone. It is a good filament dryer. It works as it's supposed to. It's a little pricey, but if you have the money, uh, I don't think it's a bad investment because it does have 
the ability to run two one kilogram spools or the bigger spool and the 360 degree rotation is pretty neat and I like the idea uh, of it offering the even heating uh, so that you uh, can more optimally uh, dry your filament there. So the build quality, as I mentioned too, is good. There's nothing wrong with the base. The plastics are all nice. Everything is assembled well. Uh, even doing the maintenance, it's easy access. They thought about that. So on the bottom, you flip it over and you can remove that DC motor with just three screws. So not a huge deal to do the little extra steps for some advanced technology there. Um, so overall, yeah, I would recommend this filament dryer. Uh, I'm going to continue to use it. I'll continue to test with it because what I really want to see is the reliability. I want to see how long that motor actually lasts. And when I find that out, I will drop that in the comments below as well. Thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy holidays to all you guys. Christmas is around the corner and, uh, you know, it's a fun time of year to make things. Uh, a lot of kids want Christmas stuff. I was working on a frosty and worked on a Christmas tree and uh, it's, you know, it's fun for me. I really do enjoy this time of year and being able to print things and, and watch everyone get excited about it. So that's cool. But like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you guys think of this. If you pick one up, the Polythemus uh, filament dryer and let me know if there's another one that you like better. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. I like interacting with everyone. So let me know. Comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys later. Thank you.